All right, now that I've watched that, let's look at some related videos or recommended whatever. What? What? Hello and welcome to Matthew's Random Commentaries. I think it's high time I threw my hat in the commentary ring. So the first subject I decided to talk about is Dobbs. If you're here for my Pokemon, Tokusatsu, or MLP content, or just joined me because I started making this sort of video, you might know him from Manga Common Skull commentary videos. You see, Dobbs is a somewhat infamous fellow in the PokerTuber community, known for making stupid topless with some seemingly completely arbitrary numbering systems, and I think I know a thing or two about how to properly make a top list. Granted, the numbering system in all of my top lists thus far doesn't even need to be explained because they are all obviously a matter of personal preference. With Dom's top lists, however, this is usually not the case. This particular top list is supposedly meant to be ranked by how big of a quote-unquote rip-off they are of Pokemon. Now, counting the Telefang bootlegs but not Robobond, there are a grand total of 4 out of 10 entries on this list that are actual knockoffs. But that's not even the only problem with this list, so let's dive right into it. Starting off this list, we have Pokemon Stadium. Uh, yeah. Now, back in the day when the Nintendo 64 which made its first debut, Pokemon Stadium changed the way we looked at Pokemon. With real 3D models, it was such an awesome game to experience for the first time. It was so good, in fact, that bootleg versions of the game were flooding the black market. One of them being, well, Pokemon Stadium. This Pokemon bootleg was made on Super Nintendo and only featured two modes, Arcade and Versus. Both modes included 12 playable Pokemon that you probably will recognize. I mean, who can forget about Dogus? Or even Daggett? It's kind of funny when you think about it. Whoever developed this game straight up took the title of Pokemon Stadium, but when it came to the names of the Pokemon, they were like, nope, that's where I draw the line. I'm going to put a pin in this one and get back to it, though I would like to point out that Dobbs is apparently unaware of some of these Pokemon's Japanese names, as a few of these appear to be poorly romanized versions of them. I mean, who can forget about Dogus? Hmm, yeah, gee, I wonder. Wait a minute! Hmm, don't those names just look strikingly familiar? Who could forget Spear and Daggett? Ogus, or even Daggett. Strikingly familiar. Next up, we have the Dimmy Children. Also known as Shin Megami Tensei Devil Children, which is a pretty wild name for a children's game, but whatever. Now, unlike number 10, Dimmy Children was an actual game created by the same developers who made Persona 3, which, if you didn't know, was a game where you control high school students who activate their special powers by, well, something that's very stupid. It surprises me this was actually allowed for a PlayStation game, even if it was rated M. <laughs> Seriously? Did he just put a huge ugly sensor bar over that? Now the kids are going to think they summon monsters by stripping or flashing boobs. It's kind of weird that he singles out Persona 3 here, especially when Persona 4 is so much more popular. Uh, I know the kid has a gun to summon the demons with, but this game predates it by a good six years. It's also probably worth noting that calling this a ripoff kind of does it a disservice, as not only was it influential enough for Atlas to harken back to it themselves, but at the very least, both the next entry on this list and the mobile game Monster Super League do seem to have drawn inspiration from it. Oh, and games like Twisted Metal and Grand Theft Auto have always been flagship titles on PlayStation consoles, even if GTA went multi-console after the first game. And I'm sure there's been PSX and PS2 games that are far more violent than those. So, I have no idea what he's talking about when he says that he doesn't understand why it was allowed. Sony is not Nintendo Dobbs. Now, though this is a problem with what he said, I'm not going to dive too deep into the psychological logic behind the gun shape of the evokers and how that ties into them summoning their personas here, as there is a time and place for that sort of thing, but for someone who has, seems to have done his research, he sure has no idea what he's talking about. It's not really that difficult to find this information too, though I will say though that if anything it's actually more stupid that they could summon their personas willy-nilly in Persona 4 Arena, solely because of the generally unexplained nature of how the TV world works. 
There might be a psychological reason for that as well, but I'm pretty sure that clashes with how Persona 3 and its characters are. But anyways, getting back to Diddy Children, just like the mainstream Pokemon games, these games came in two versions, the Red Book and the Black Book. The background behind the series follows demon human hybrids called Devil Children who journey from Japan to the demon world. Just like Pokemon, these kids were allied by monsters that would join a party and help guide them to the end. But the way you capture these monsters is what probably killed the game. You didn't battle and weaken them in order to capture them. It was more of a, hey, yeah, you want to like, you know, tag along with us? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. And that was it. Pretty lame. But what did you expect from a Pokemon knockoff that came from the same people who made Persona 3? My head, I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. Notice that while he mentions Mega 10 predates Pokemon, he doesn't mention how Mega 10 is actually a monster collecting franchise before Pokemon was, and the means of recruiting demons was actually the same as Demi Cat. So, which is the knockoff now, Dobbs? <laughs> Coming at number 8, we have Dinosaur King. Now you're probably noticing a pattern in this list. Hilariously said by Dorkly, if you take Pokemon and replace a monster with another entity, someone will give you a bag of money in your own franchise, which is pretty accurate when you think about it. Now in this case, if you took Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Jurassic Park and blended them all together, you'll get what's called Dinosaur King. In this universe, the dinosaurs were basically the Pokemon, and the cards that hold the dinosaurs were basically the Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Like really? Was this thought of while taking a shower? I have to say it right now, if Dinosaur King is going to be considered a knockoff of anything. It should be Digimon's first three anime series. And there's a time and place to go into more details about this, but the comparison should be pretty obvious if you watch the anime. Also, like I mentioned, the Nintendo DS video game has guns used to summon the dinosaurs with, just like Demi Cats. Also, he thinks Dorkly is a good source of information? Gee, that makes sense. Both he and they don't seem to like thinking very hard about things after all. The people at Dorgley apparently even think that it's either a good idea to throw Mega Man having blood or that Mega Man actually has blood. I mean, make no mistake, Dorgley's humor can be pretty funny for how low the brow is, but it's still generally not my cup of tea most of the time. You didn't put any thought into it! Yeah, I did. I thought I knew the answers. This is probably one of the most bizarre knockoffs of Pokemon I've ever seen, but that's not even the funniest part about this TV show. The main character, Max, was voiced by the same actress who played Ash in Pokemon. On top of that, the goofy criminals, like Team Rocket and Pokemon, sound very similar to Jesse and James. Here, this is for yourself. But in all seriousness, I remember coming across this TV show when I was just a kid, and it wasn't that bad, even though it only lasted for 49 episodes. So he says Ash's actress played the main character, yet when pointing out that Ursula and Xander sound like Jesse and James, he didn't mention that Ursula and Jesse share a voice actress as well. Also, Xander should probably sound more like Pegasus from Yu-Gi-Oh than James. I mean, I know both of them sounded pretty campy, but come on. At least he didn't mention the fact that Helga was voiced by the guy who voiced Dr. Eggman in Sonic X in recent Sonic games. Nice try, but you two will not get out of your home or that easy. I'll take care of the dinosaur. What? Wait, whoops. Stuff like this is exactly what D-Team is all about, right? D for Dobbs. Yeah, well, dumb also starts with a D. Next up, we have a D-Team Cow Sean Show. Yeah, I've had my website. Now, this is my bootleg. It's basically a pirate version of Pokemon Yellow Pirate Bootleg. Apparently, it's a pirate version of Pokemon Yellow Pirate Bootleg. Wait, check this game out. Yeah, I'm just not going to be this. I'm just not going to be terrible. But anyways, that's why I use Pokemon Yellow. I'm trying to beat you. And then you'll take the ultra-star Pokemon. Well, that's the difference. Listen, if you're going to have to follow the middle of the battle, all the Pokemon will trade, it's not going to be a little bit. And you'll have to try to switch to the game. Which is not going to be a little bit. But the Pokemon team is going to be a little bit. Just putting a pin in this one, too. Next. Coming at number six, we have Dragon Warrior Monsters. Now, it's common knowledge that Dragon Quest has been around longer than Pokemon, but this particular spinoff didn't see light until the Pokemania era had already begun. In the original Dragon Quest, you fight against monsters as a human, but in Dragon Quest Monsters, you guess it, you use your monsters to battle. Unlike the first Pokemon game, in Dragon Quest Monsters, capturing your monsters was a lot more complicated than tossing a Pokeball. You could easily play the basic ones with feet, but if you wanted a super rare one of your own, you had to hatch it, and that made hours and hours of monster breeding. So moving on to the main goal of the game, the goal is to travel around various levels defeating bosses to like one more work gates until you reach the tournament. The tournament being the Elite Four of the game. Dragon Warrior Monsters. Top 10 biggest Pokemon knockoff. Dragon Warrior Monsters. Yeah, no. You remember how I said calling Demi Kids a ripoff was doing into this service? Well, that probably goes a million fold for Dragon Quest monsters. Pokemon might be the most influential on RPG worldwide, but Dragon Quest Monster certainly comes close in Japan. Little known the aforementioned Mega Ten franchise, but that wasn't the one on the list, just Demi Kids. 
Now, some better known examples of games influenced by Dragon Quest monsters are Digimon World 2 and Yo-Gai Watch. It's also most likely that Dragon Quest monsters drew inspiration from Mega Ten as well due to the similarity of how you recruit monsters, with the added mechanic of being able to increase your odds of recruiting them with me as opposed to having to talk to them to increase your odds. Now, it's also the first game to my knowledge to introduce the concept of monster fusion. Something that Robopon, Digimon v Pets, Digimon World 2, Digimon Adventure Zero 2, Monster Rancher, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yo-Kai Watch, and many smaller name monster collecting media franchises would emulate. It's also probably worth noting that it is actually possible to obtain some of the more powerful monsters by catching them, though it is considerably more difficult. Of course, there are some that indeed can only be contained by breeding, but I really think it's more subjective as to whether or not that could really be considered a bad thing. Now, it probably didn't help that Pokemon Yellow was released 13 days before this game, because in Dragon Warrior Monsters, your monsters actually followed you around. Which, like we all know, your Pikachu did the exact same thing in Pokemon Yellow. Yes, and only your Pikachu. In Dragon Quest Monsters, your entire active party follows you, and unlike what the footage he used implies, you are not limited to your starting slime with this, and you're just going to wind up breeding that thing later in favor of a more powerful monster anyway. Now just like any Pokemon knockoff, in this game another main goal of yours was to capture and train all the monsters. But what really killed it for most people was a terrible source system. You simply had no space. And even if you were to catch all the monsters, a lot of them started to hate and disobey you for not battling with them. But overall, it was a pretty good game, even if it was a Pokemon knockoff. I don't get it. Why would you even want to store a bunch of weaker monsters when you can be breeding them instead anyway? There's no real point in keeping monsters beyond your main team. Now this is mostly a matter of personal preference, and as far as I'm aware, there is no way an integral part of the gameplay experience. In order to 100% the game, you only really need to feel the game's equivalent of Pokédex anyway, something by the way that you can do with a single card in almost every game in the sub-franchise except for the second or the different versions. Uh, though unlike Pokemon, the 3DS remake combines the two. Coming at number 5, we have Choco Gators. This one doesn't even look anything like Pokemon. In fact, the isometric overworld RPG view text boxes and horizontal battle system remind me more of Mega Man Battle Network. In fact, the battle system seems to be featuring the protagonist fighting the aliens by himself by throwing eggs at them. I'm going to stick a pin in this one as well. Coming at number four, we have Pokemon Crystal, the Vietnamese version. <laughs> Sticking a pin in this one, next. For number three, we have Monster Ranger. Less than one that's a Digimon made its debut, and new Monster Field franchise came into existence, which was Monster Ranger. What? Monster Rancher is basically nothing like Pokemon. I am so sticking a pin in this one. Now, a lot of these Pokemon knockoffs are on this list for the wrong reasons. But Monster Rancher, on the other hand, is actually a pretty decent game. What? Would not the knockoff be on this list for being a bad game? How is that the wrong reason? Ugh, giving me a migraine with a complete lack of logic! Now, just like Pokemon, in Monster Rancher, you caught and trained monsters and eventually battled with them. Uh, is he serious? I mean, I know it's possible to catch monsters in later games, but that was never the primary means of obtaining them. Well, except maybe an Evo, if I recall correctly, but Evo is the one that seems to have killed the franchise. Shame, really. I thought it was pretty good myself. But this game had kind of a different feel to it. Understatement of the Aeon, ladies and gentlemen. Not only leveling up your monsters gave you high rank and fame, it also gave you access to rare creatures. The only drawback to this game was that if you level up your monster to the max rank, it would die. What That's not even remotely how that actually works. I mean, for one thing, you can't increase your monster's rank 
you would have to fuse it into a higher rank monster or get a new one. Additionally, monster lifespans vary from monster to monster, and while training harder can have a negative impact on said lifespan, you can only increase said lifespan so much. So the highest possible stats will always vary, and it's entirely possible your monster will die before you even remotely get a chance to bring out its full potential. It's kind of any comedic. I mean, if my first level 100 Pokemon just went out fainted and never came back, I would probably throw my game across the room. But anyways, there was a feature to freeze your monster so they could battle with him later against your friends in person mode. But probably the coolest highlight of the game was the random monster generator. You could randomly spawn monsters by putting in various sources of media. For example, you could put a Blink-182 CD in the PlayStation and get a random monster out of it. Which was really cool. It's actually not random at all. In fact, certain rarer monsters could only be found by using certain CDs. The same CD will always give you the same results as long as it's in good condition, not modified in any way. In fact, if you had a CD or audio disc, you could even generate the same exact monster as the legit copy. Although CDR data apparently does not properly replicate them. Also, I'm pretty sure you can't get Hengator from, from a Blink-182 CD, but it's not like he would know that, and you'd have to really look into that to know for sure. But yeah, it's probably not a thing that happened. For runner-up, we have Telefang 1. You know, I probably wouldn't have much of a problem with this if it weren't for the fact that he was putting Telefing on the list instead of Pokemon Diamond and Jade, sticking a pin in this one anyway. Mentioned that the main character was basically a sand slide. Oh, right, because Monster. RPGs aren't allowed to draw inspiration from the same source as heaven forbid there be like five different Dogu monsters across multiple franchises. And this knockoff Mew was downright creepy. Mew is a fetus! An adorable fetus, sure, but it's still a fetus. But for the fact that this knockoff was knocked off, I just tell thing for number two on this list. And for number one, the biggest knockoff of Pokemon, in my opinion, is. It's not Digimon, it's Robopon. Now, normally I'd have to sort of agree at the very least with the assessment that Robopon is a knockoff, but the problem here is its place in the list. Yep, time to cap things off by bringing back up all those pinned entries back into the picture. You see, the biggest problem with this list is that the actual knockoffs aren't even the highest on the list. Yeah, sure, Robopon might be borderline plagiarism, but you have an entry near the bottom of the list that is straight up plagiarism, and an entry just below this one that's literally a, just a bad translation of an existing Pokemon game. What's worse is that you put entries that are nothing like Pokemon above some of the actual knockoffs and games that are closer to looking or playing like Pokemon. If you're going to make the list about which is the biggest quote-unquote knockoff, then it should be ordered more like this, though do know this is a very rough list and I might have gotten a bit of the ordering wrong here. Now before I end this video I just want to address one more thing. And for the question of the day, which game do you think is the biggest Pokemon knockoff? Be sure to leave it down below in the comments, I can't wait to see you guys have in mind. He's saying that like it's a subjective issue, it really isn't though. How big a knockoff something is, is actually a scientifically quantifiable thing. Of course, by this point, it's obvious that he doesn't understand that somehow. You didn't put any thought into it! Until next time, stay determined. You wanna be, yeah. Make your money. Dinosaur King is your destiny, yeah. Make your money. Control the cards right in your hands. Jurassic Giants at your command. This is the D team. Watch out, here we go. Prehistoric dinosaurs aren't acting anymore. See them fight, hear a roar. Watch out, cause they're right next door. The past is in the present. Twisted upside down. These fossils are colossal. Only one can wear the crown. Dinosaur King is what you want to be. Yeah. Come on and make your move. Dinosaur King is your destiny. Yeah. Come on and make your move.
don't know if I should have mentioned the second season of Dinosaur King and the third season of Sonic X. Eh, nah. Probably not.